Hey folks, and welcome to Truck King. With me today is the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness. And the Wilderness family from the Subaru brand is all about getting off-road out into the wide world and exploring. Well, today that's exactly what we're gonna do. And as you can already see, we're gonna see how this thing handles here in the snow. Powering the Subaru Crosstrek Wilderness is a two and a half liter boxer engine, a four cylinder. It makes 182 horsepower and 178 pound feet of torque. And that is sent through a CVT, but here for the Wilderness Edition, the CVT tuning is changed. And then there's also a revised final drive ratio. It goes from a 370 up to a 411, which essentially means this thing should put its power to the ground just a little bit more aggressive a little bit more with authority than a regular Crosstrek would. Now, when you go for the Wilderness package, there are some functional off-road upgrades, but the biggest one, honestly, I think is just the way it looks. The styling is entirely revised. You're getting a unique grill up there. You're getting those unique fog lamps. Of course, the gold accents, which you're gonna see on the roof and throughout the bumpers as well. So Wilderness brings along that rugged look. You're also getting the plastic cladding over your tires, giving again that wide sort of wheel arch styling. And you know what? Why don't you drop in the comments right now and let me know what you think of the style here on the Crosstrek. All right, folks, before we do anything really exciting off-road, let me just climb into the back seat and we'll talk about size here on the Crosstrek. And the first thing I like to point out is the baby seat situation. There are lower latch on the driver and passenger side, and there are top tethers on all three positions here in the second row, which is a good thing. So, this is... 36 and a half inches of rear seat leg room. And it's actually quite a bit. The seat could even come back further and I would have enough leg room. So definitely enough here for a full size adult. I stand at six foot two. Headroom is just enough. You know, I could use a little bit more, but I will say that, you know what, I'm not touching. So that's also good news. So when it comes to the second row, yeah, it's definitely big enough for adults to sit in. Now, because this is the wilderness too, I appreciate we got some nice rubber floor mats, a little bit thicker, and they even have that cool kind of mountain motif on them. And then when it comes to amenities, I do get a USB-C and a USB-A port down here in the center. And now let's hop out back and look at the storage. So no powered hatch here on the Crosstrek. And there you go, this is exactly 20 cubic feet of rear storage. And once again, I'll point out the Wilderness gets a pretty nice heavy duty rubber floor mat there. So if you're tossing in wet boots or muddy items, you're gonna be okay. When it comes to other amenities here, we do have the sunshade of course, and a light, but I'm looking for an outlet and I don't see one. Usually in these kind of vehicles, we have a 12 volt power outlet at the back. But uh, yeah, the Crosstrek doesn't have power back here. And then the last thing we can also look at is what's underneath the floor. And very important for a vehicle like this, you are getting a proper spare tire there. So yeah, anything that calls itself wilderness better have a spare, and this Subaru does. Let me hit you with all the off-road numbers right now. And one of the most important is ground clearance. This thing goes from 8.7 inches up to 9.3 inches. So not a huge lift, but the important aspect is that you're actually getting longer travel suspension. It's not just a simple block lift. You're getting more wheel travel and more suspension thanks to that lift. And running around in the snow today, a little bit of extra clearance should make a pretty big difference. Now let me run down the rest of the numbers and they are all a little bit in improved compared to the standard Crosstrek. So right here, we have an approach angle of 20 degrees. We have a departure angle of 33 degrees, and we have a breakover angle of 21.1 degrees. And all three of those numbers are about two degrees better than the standard Crosstrek. Now, one other interesting change is the wheelbase on the Wilderness is slightly shorter than the wheelbase on the standard model. And what that should do 
is result in slightly better maneuverability off-road and we might get in some tight spots today so we will be able to feel how much that wheelbase difference actually affects this vehicle but uh, yeah now i'm excited to go out there and see what this cross track can do there are a couple of drive modes here in the Crosstrek we have to talk about because they're going to help us out today. So Subaru calls its off-road mode X mode. You can see it right here, X mode normal. So we click on that. And it's kind of funny, you have snow and dirt or you have deep snow and mud. So I would say it's sort of like snow and dirt is maybe where you start and then if things are getting really slippery, you go to deep snow and mud, which is probably where we're going to leave it today because the snow is fairly deep. I just don't know exactly how deep Subaru thinks is deep. <laughs> so the other settings here um, are not off-road settings. We can go up to driving assistance. You can see all the settings for all of your driving aids. I do appreciate that it allows you to change all of these different settings. You can turn them off, you can turn them on, and you can set up exactly how you want them to work. Also, your warning volume, this thing does like to beep at you a lot, so at least you can tell it to be a little bit quieter. And that's really it for our off-road settings. We got the X mode in deep snow, and now we'll go hit the deep snow, see how it does. All right, folks, the time has come to dive into the snow. So again, I've got it in deep snow mode, and I do have to let you know the conditions. Uh, right now, it's about two degrees Celsius, so a little bit above freezing. And the snow that I'm running in, it's been rained on recently, so it's kind of been you know, tamped down a little bit. And then I also just had a Chevy Colorado ZR2 out on the trails as well. Go watch that video if you haven't already. So I did have a more capable truck break the trail. So with all that being said, I'm gonna dive in now with the Subaru and see how it does. Now for tires, we have the stock Yokohama Geolanders here still. Let's see how they do. So again, I do like the power off the line from this CVT and of course the revised final drive. The Geolanders are slipping quite a bit, but they're doing their job. I'm keeping my momentum up. I'm kind of stuck in the ruts that the truck created, but here I'm breaking free now. <laughs> And it's sliding all over the place, but it is absolutely doing its job. And the key is when you put it in deep snow mode, what that usually means is that it allows for quite a bit of wheel slip. So even though my tires are slipping all over the place, it's allowing them to do that, which is exactly what I need to keep up my momentum. And so far, so good. Right on, Crosstrek. I didn't know exactly what to expect out here. And again, I can see I've been dragging things down in the snow, but so far it doesn't matter. It just keeps chugging along. <laughs> Nicely done. Crosstrek, that was not bad at all. So uh, yeah, you could just see the wheel speeds were keeping up there. It was absolutely just chugging its way through, even though it was dragging a little bit. Oh, I'm smelling, oh, I don't know if that's CVT, I'm smelling some kind of burning something <laughs> because that's the one thing I'll tell you, it's basically just sitting at 5,000 RPM and just chugging away. But uh, when it comes to just getting through the snow, it did pretty well there and it's given me enough confidence to head down the trail a little bit. So yeah, let's go for it. And here we go, folks. So again, what I'm feeling so far is that there's an okay amount of low end torque probably thanks in part to that revised final drive and the geolanders have done all right you know what they were definitely spinning quite a bit so not like a, quite as much grip as i would expect from sort of a dedicated winter but it's not been too bad now i am approaching a mud hole it's making me a little anxious anxious and i'll tell you why one of the achilles heels on this wilderness model and what i feel like a lot of the wilderness models is the approach angle. Um, 20 degrees of approach is not a lot and that nose hangs out quite a bit. So rather than just dive in full speed here, I'm gonna hit it with the medium speed and we'll see how it does. Okay, all right, all right. A little more, a little more, a little more. <laughs> yeah, okay, Subaru. <laughs> okay, okay, not bad, man. It's doing all right. Um, the clearance so far through the snow and everything has been just enough. And then the suspension, I won't say it's plush, but it does 
feel like it's been tuned for off-roading. It doesn't feel like just a standard cross track in so much that, yeah, it's swallowing things up a little bit better. So I appreciate not the, the, the suspension not being too harsh. And uh, yeah, we'll keep on keeping on. So as we drive down to uh, our next real obstacle, I can tell you that there is no camera system here on the Subaru. There's just a backup camera, so it's not like I have cool off-road cameras. There is one off-road screen here though, called Driving Statistics, and you can see it. It shows you where the power is going, where it's coming from, when your front wheels turn, and then watch if I start slipping the tires, they start flashing yellow and going, what are you doing? You're slipping, but it actually shows which side of the vehicle you're slipping on, which is cool. And another thing this Subaru has, of course, is torque vectoring. So as I'm coming around those corners in the snow, it's gonna send more power to the outside wheels to help me actually come around the corner, which again, yeah, in the deep slippery stuff is quite helpful. And I like that screen because you can actually sort of see it working in real time. Now it could get interesting, folks. We are pretty deep in the forest now, but so far we've run on trails that were broken by a Colorado ZR2. Now I'm gonna start breaking my own trails with this cross track. So uh, yeah, so far it's making me feel confident. Let's see how it does. Oh, it's spinning, baby. So far not bad though. We got a little bit of a hill right here. <laughs> oh, the obstacle detection keeps coming on and saying it's detecting obstacles and thinking I'm going to hit things, which would be nice if that stuff shut off in uh, deep snow and mud mode, but a lot of brands don't do that. But that being said, that was great. That was actually pretty good. Again, I'm, I'm finding myself pretty impressed by this thing. Now, I could feel the nose plowing through the snow, which is the one downside. I just, you know, there's a lot of things dragging here. The nose feels like it's pushing. The belly feels like it's dragging. So that's constantly reminding me that my clearance is not great here, but the traction, the all-wheel drive, and the tires so far are doing exactly what I want them to. So before I dive into this next obstacle, I just went over here to my driving assistance screen and I shut off the pre-collision braking and the lane departure and the forward collision warning, I set it to near so it's not looking as far out into the world. And I'll say this one more time, I really wish off-road modes would automatically disable some of that stuff. It just makes sense in my mind, but here we go. Uh, we're on Wall Street now and we got some deep ruts left over here by trucks and our backhoe. And frankly, they've just been getting deeper and deeper. So, oh, I'm pushing with the nose there big time. Oh, the nose. Oh, baby. Come on, baby. Oh, oh. Okay, definitely dug in. And once again, I know I was plowing with my bumper there. Okay, but I got a bit of reverse. And now we're going to go back into drive and hit her with a bit of speed. And I got to keep my momentum going here. Got to keep the momentum up. Got to keep it up. Come on, come on, come on, come on, Subaru. Come on, Subaru. Yes, nice. There was one other deep section there that I was not stopping for because this is definitely a momentum machine. Well, again, kudos to the tires. Kudos to the all-wheel drive. The issue is clearance, especially on the nose. It was a snowplow right there. And that's what I really felt like slowed me right down and got me stuck. But I made it out. So let's keep going. The other point I have to make about the cross track wilderness, as I try to get started, <laughs> stopping and starting is the toughest thing to do in the snow, folks. A little bit of reverse, and that'll give me a bit of a run up to it. Um, but I just wanted to say, another thing that I have to mention is the size of this vehicle is excellent out here. It just feels like it fits on these trails so well. Width is never a problem. I have been fishtailing quite a bit and slipping around, but it just never feels that close to the trees beside me. And of course, we're out here very often with full-size trucks, heavy-duty trucks, so I'm used to those massive vehicles. So in comparison, especially, this thing feels so well suited to the trails just based on its size. And then, yeah, I haven't really needed the maneuverability today, but the little bit of a tighter wheelbase just means that out here you're going to be able to to uh, fit around tighter corners. And now momentum. This should be the last really challenging bit. Let's see how it goes. There's a couple rocks right there. <laughs> Whoa, getting a little sideways on me. Getting a little sideways on me, but not bad. It bounced up and over those rocks. 
And even though I'm dragging things, it just keeps on chugging along. Nicely done cross track. And folks, I gotta say, especially based on its size, size, it is kind of fun to get a bit of speed here in the cross trek and come around these corners rally style. <laughs> and yeah, a little bit of long travel suspension and uh, she feels okay even moving at speed like that. So I'm having more fun than I expected in the cross trek wilderness today. I, I will gladly admit that. We're just off the trail, I hopped out, and right away you could hear that this thing is working hard to keep itself cool, listen. Now, unfortunately, I do have to say that I was smelling a lot of a burning smell while we were out there as well. I don't know exactly what that was, but it wasn't that comforting. But the one thing that is nice to know is that the wilderness specifically gets a transmission oil cooler, which other cross treks don't get. And that also means that this thing can tow up to 3,500 pounds. So out there in the snow today, we were really working that transmission and it sounds like it and it smelled like it, but it did do a nice job out there. And it's nice to know you can tow a little bit more with this model as well. And now folks, we are off the trail. I wanted to do some on-roading because the wilderness, I mean, it is about off-roading and adventure, but honestly, it's more about rough roads than true off-roading. And that's what I found here right now. I'm on this snow-covered, again, kind of slushy road. It's now three degrees Celsius, so a little bit warmer. Things are getting a little softer. This is a dirt road to begin with, so it's already rutted out. This is an environment where this vehicle truly shines. It was pretty good off-road, you saw it, but I have to tell you, the nose, it was just so obvious how low that nose was hanging. So if I did try something like our ditch crossing or even going on the left hook, I just know the nose would have been underwater, dragging in mud, and that's no bueno. But out here on a fairly flat road, you're not worried about that approach angle. And yeah, this thing feels totally at home. The symmetrical all-wheel drive does a great job at just being solid when you take off you don't get any of that fishtail squirrely action you're feeling like the power is getting to all four tires as soon as you want it to and then even if i go a little crazy and do a little bit of this action out here the beauty and you feel it right away is torque vectoring is that the subaru realizes that hey i'm being a dummy and i'm turning too hard and right away it goes let's send power to the other side and straighten that vehicle back out so that's where the all-wheel drive system i think really shines is in these rutted out dirty especially slippery roads yeah the, the subaru just feels sure-footed more so than a lot of other crossovers in this class i'll touch on the interior now i do like the uh, little attentions to detail here in the wilderness models. You're getting the wilderness badges here on your headrests, also down on the rubber floor mats. And then just the fact that you get what look to be slightly more uh, thick and aggressive rubber floor mats. It's exactly what these models are supposed to be about. Getting wet, muddy boots and feeling okay about climbing back into your vehicle. So yeah, there's a couple of sort of functional interior upgrades. And then I do like the gold motif. It's kind of nice with the stitching too. So yeah, the interior here, still kind of plain and basic, which is kind of a Subaru way of doing things, but just enough flair to make it exciting. Now I'll quickly touch on Subaru Starlink. I don't think this is the best infotainment system out there. Still just feels kind of clunky, like there's a lot of screens to go through and just doesn't look quite as sharp as some of the other uh, infotainment systems on the market. And then I will mention Subaru's EyeSight system, which is all of their you know autonomous driver aids. I do think the system works well. It does identify the lanes well and the markings well. My issue with it is that generally I find it to be too aggressive. I feel like it's trying to literally pull the wheel out of my hands at some points where these systems should be more of almost a suggestion at your hands. I feel like Subarus have always been more like, no, this is where I want to be in the lane and that's exactly where you're going to drive. So me personally, I find I get in and just shut most of that stuff off. I do appreciate that I can shut it off, that's important, but uh, it's just one thing to note. Of all those driver assistance systems, I think Subarus is one of the most aggressive. And now the last big number I haven't got to, what does it cost? Well, here in Canada, this Crosstrek Wilderness is gonna come in right around $38,000. In the United States, it's a little bit more affordable, around 32 grand. And at those price points, I feel okay about this vehicle. I feel okay about the amount of capability you're getting 
on and above a standard cross track. So you know what? This is definitely not just uh, a paint and stickers package, as a lot of these crossovers can be. This is a legitimate upgrade over stock, and therefore, yeah, I actually feel like the price uh, sits okay with me. Well, folks, we have come to the end of this review. Now, I think as you saw when I took this thing out on the trail, the Crosstrek has excellent all-wheel drive, and the clearances on the wilderness were just enough to keep me up out of the snow and uh, make sure I didn't get stuck. Now, I will say I wish the approach angle was better, and that one factor right there is a limiting factor. It means that this thing is still more of a rough rotor than an off-roader, but honestly, as, an, as a rough road adventure, package I think this one comes together really nicely and does exactly what it promises so folks that's it for this one now of course I do need to hear from you go in the comments let me know what you think of the cross trek wilderness and all our snowy off-roading today as always while you're down there don't forget to hit like hit subscribe hit join to become a member of the trucking channel and then come right back here to see what we are testing next and if you'll excuse me I'm going back in the forest because I got more snowy off-roading to do see ya